The title of our play is Japanese American Internment Camp The Rights of Individual Citizens versus National Security. Washington, D.C., October 1990, The White House. Ladies and gentlemen, President George H. W. Bush. A monetary sum in words alone cannot restore, cannot restore the lost years or erase painful memories. Neither can they fully convey the nation's resolve to rectify injustice and uphold the rights of individuals. We can never fully right the wrongs of the past. We can take a clear stand for justice and recognize that serious injustices were done to the Japanese Americans during World War II. In enacting a law calling for restitution and offering a sincere apology, your fellow Americans have in a very real sense, renew their traditional commitments to the ideals of freedom, equality, and justice. You and your family have our best wishes for the future. Along with the letter of apology from the president came a government check of $20,000. In addition, a total of $38 million were paid out in property claims to the Japanese Americans. However, this was less than 10% of their value in 1942. Let's take a look back to see how this all transpired. <clears throat> extra, extra, read all, read all about it. Pearl Harbor bomb, Japs declare war on U.S. Thrown into war with Japan after the sudden attack on Pearl Harbor, American leaders feared that Japanese Americans would be loyal to Japan were con considered a threat that make it harder to defend America. Prior to the bombing of Pearl Harbor, Americans hoped to remain neutral during the war being waged in Europe. About 3,000 military personnel were killed, while eight American battleships and 13 other naval vessels were sunk or severely damaged at Pearl Harbor. My family and I, as white Americans living in California, have long resented the Japanese. We put up signs telling our neighbors they aren't welcome. We are friends with the newspaper who agree with us. I mean, we've been trying to get rid of stinking yellow bells for years. They're taking our land. Their children are taking up space in our schools. I don't want to support no foreigners with my taxes. So when Japan attacked us, I waved my flag. I'm trying to get the nation to see the threat we are under. War hysteria grew. Restrictions were applied to the Japanese Americans. They were expected to remain in their homes from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. They were not allowed to go more than five miles from their homes. It worked! I think we've got them Japs on the run. They know they're not welcome here. In addition to curfews, Japanese Americans were ordered to turn in all weapons, shortwave radios, and binoculars that could be used by spies. Most Japanese Americans wanted to show their allegiance to America. So they quietly followed, yet mistrust continued against Japanese Americans and was increased through news articles such as this one. Ten weeks after declaring war on Japan, President Franklin D. Roosevelt, feeling pressure from the public, signed Executive Order No. 9066. This order authorized General John DeWitt to remove all Japanese Americans from sensitive military areas. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, the President of the United States, President Franklin D. Roosevelt. My fellow Americans, by virtue and authority vested in me as President of the United States and Commander in Chief of the Army Navy, I hereby authorize and direct the Secretary of War whenever he or any designated commander deem necessary or desirable to prescribe military areas in which any or all persons may be excluded. The right to enter, remain in, or leave shall be subject to whatever restriction the Secretary of War may impose. I hereby, the Secretary of War is hereby authorized to provide such tra transportation, food, shelter, and other accommodations as may be necessary for those who are excluded. I hereby further authorize all agencies to assist the Secretary of War in carrying out this executive order.
Grandma, why did we have to leave our home? What about my school and my friends? I was born here, so doesn't that make me an American? Yes, it does. And I'm sure the government and Mr. Roosevelt had made a big mistake. And when they realized that we are not the enemy, but we have many hardships to endure, they let us return to our homes. We're lucky our neighbors, the Santinos, are willing to watch over our land and possessions. Once Japanese Americans were told they had to leave their homes, they had only a few days to pack up in them. They were only allowed to take the possessions that they could carry. This first groups were sent to relocation assembly centers and then sent on to relocation camps. These camps were located in Utah, Wyoming, Idaho, Arkansas, Colorado, California, and Arizona. This family, the Shikadas, ended up at the Gila River Relocation Camp in Arizona. This camp held about 15,000 people. Our city seems more like a concentration camp. Notice the towers and floodlights? Guards with their dogs are frightening. We have little or no privacy in the crude barracks General Dewitt expects us to live in. Last week, I heard Mr. Mysterio say they plan on building schools so your education won't stop. I'm willing to put up with a lot if it helps show other Americans that we are not the enemy, but we have many hardships to endure. There are snakes and scorpions. Scorching desert heat makes it difficult. We had an unexpected visit from First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt this week. She heard we were being treated too well, maybe better than most Americans who had a ration. America has refused to grant citizenship to the Japanese Americans. So now we have a group of people who have been here for as long as 50 years without the rights to become citizens. Following the attack on Pearl Harbor, there has been no time to investigate families or to follow the rules of our country that a man is innocent until he is proven guilty. So we have sent the Japanese Americans to these camps, like the ones here at Halo River, for both their safety and for the safety of the country. They are not being coddled. These families do not have sufficient water and the food is slow in arriving. But I find the Japanese Americans to be patient, adaptable, and courageous for the most part. I appreciate the kind words Ms. Roosevelt gave to us and the thoughtful way she appreciated all of our courage. She lifted my morale. I can't wait to tell your father when you said that in the field. Life in camp isn't all that great, but we make it as enjoyable as we can. We pretend not to see the barbed wire. Our days are filled with playing baseball, getting together with friends to play card games or mahjong, and most importantly, attending school. At school, we plan to start up a school newspaper athletics, and honor society. Mom says she'll be a leader for Girl Scouts. Japanese Americans forced to relocate to internment, to internment camps were, in effect, prisoners. Debate raged in newspapers, government buildings, homes, and on Main Street America about the possibility of these Japanese saboteurs and the need for these holding pens. Japanese Americans were tried in, in, sent in newspapers and radios and sentenced without due process. Executive Order Number 9066 was also debated by many and challenged by one internee. In 1944, the U.S. Supreme Court sided with the government against individual rights. However, Korematsu versus the United States continued to be contested. And in 1983, Fred Korematsu won some satisfactions when the U.S. District Court overturned the 1944 decision. Denying Japanese Americans the constitutional protection of due process, a fundamental right in this country, illustrates the examples of balancing individual freedoms versus the greater national good. Balancing these freedoms versus the greater national threat still remains difficult as this country faces global terrorism in the 21st century. Don't, Don't let this happen again.
like a male interview with this other girl who was in um, internment camps when she was younger. Mm -hmm. What did they, what were the things that stood out most in their minds that they told you about? They were young, but they remembered the confusion of having to leave and having to leave everything behind and then coming back to the whole world and how odd it felt to be back in a whole different place after staying in a camp like that for so long. How did this emotionally affect you when you started doing research in this topic? I mean, did you, were you surprised by maybe some feelings that you had in discovering this is how the United States treated Japanese Americans? Um, I felt like it was kind of wrong because they didn't know if the Japanese Americans were a part of how Japanese, the Pearl Harbor was bombed. So it kind of felt like they were being punished for something some of them didn't feel that was right for them and how they felt was kind of rude, I guess, to say. <laughs> you mentioned attending schools. Who taught the schools? What school supplies did they have? How formal was the education that the students were getting? And any idea of the extent of the schooling? Um, there was, they hired Caucasian people to go and teach the schools. Um, they pretty much had the normal school textbooks, pencils, papers, but the, ed the education was decent. The, it wasn't as good as we have it because not all of the people who were hired were necessarily teachers, but they were hired to go in and teach this, these Japanese American kids. Mm -hmm. What made you choose this subject? Um, well, one of the people in our group brought up um, Japanese American internment camps, and the rest of us didn't know what it was about, but it like sounded interesting. So then we did research, and it sounded pretty cool, and we decided to use it for um, our play this year. The primary sources that you found, besides the two the, the interviews, which are great primary sources, what other were you overwhelmed by the amount of primary sources you might have found? Um, we weren't overwhelmed, but we found many, but. People don't really talk about it anymore, so there's not, like, in public areas, there aren't really stuff, but we went to places like State Archives and the, U the University of Arizona, and we saw, like, pictures and, like, scripts of, like, what they ate and stuff and, like, documentaries and, like, documents and, like, more, like, stationary stuff that they wrote down to mm -hmm. document what happened in the camps and send it off to, like, the government. But we also found many pictures that helped us with um, displaying the play itself. Did you find that culturally the camps were accepting of the ways of the Japanese people? Did they provide the foods the people were used to eating, the clothing that they might be used to wearing? Did you find any information on any of that? Um, Kind of. We watched a movie about the camp in Topaz, mm -hmm. and it said that they went and got the clothing to have hanger, uh, to have curtains and um, their clothes to make for them. But it wasn't like how people outside of the camps were. Like it was kind of to say um, hand-me-downs, I guess, mm -hmm. and it wasn't really good for them. But it was the best that they had. Did you find any um, primary sources that told you what, say, what the average length of the stay was for most of the internees? The average length of the stay was probably was about two to four years, because some of the camps opened earlier than others, and some closed later than others. So it kind of depended on which camp you were in, but the average stay was two to four years. Thank mm -hmm. you.